everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Justice League International. Take a look at these comic covers right here. Now, Justice League International, out of all the Justice League incarnations, is kind of the black sheep of the family, but not necessarily in a bad way. The reason why I call it the black sheep is because it's completely different from all the other incarnations. Why? Well, although this is a superhero team that does fight for good truth justice in the American way, or apparently in this case, the international way, Justice League International is, by all rights, a sitcom. Yes, you heard me. It is, by all rights, a sitcom. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you know that going into the comic. But Justice League International isn't necessarily a superhero comic where you go around and you fight big climactic villains like Amazo and Felix Faust and the Key and, and the Weapons Master and so on and so forth. It is, like I said, a sitcom. In addition to that, the Justice League International branches off into several different forms of the team. Uh, the two major ones is Justice League International, which is just the American branch, and then Justice League Europe, which is, you guessed it, the Europe branch. There's also Justice League Antarctica, but it isn't collected in any of these trades yet. They're still coming out with trades. And it only lasts for, I think, an issue with Killer Penguins. Okay. Well, I mean, it happened in the Batman movie. It can happen in a comic. Anyways, as I was saying, and this is a point that I'm going to constantly point out to you, a point that I'm pointing out to you, is that Justice League International is a sitcom. There's a lot of dialogue, a lot of character interaction, and a good amount of character development. Yes, they do go out and fight against evil. There's no denying that. There's a lot of villains that they do go up against. But there's always a comedic tone to this comic, even in the most serious, dastardly, death-defying moments, there's always a comedic tone, which, again, isn't bad if you know that going into it. Now, like I said, Justice League International has a lot of rotating members. For example, Batman shows up every once in a while, and then you get Dr. Fate who jumps in here and there, or, you know, Wonder Woman makes an appearance there and here. But really, the main people of this book are John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, Fire, Ice, Guy Gardner, Mr. Miracle, and Red Rocket, along with some others like the European branch, which consists of Metamorpho, Power Girl, Captain Adam, Flash, so and so forth. The great thing about these comics is that not only does it collect the international stuff but of the main series, but also collects the Justice League Europe stuff, and it keeps it in a nice chronological order that the stories take place in. But yes, like I said, it is very much a sitcom, you know, there's some really comedic things that happen in this. The shenanigans that Blue Beetle and Who's the Gold get themselves in are just great. Guy Gardner is at his most outrageous, arrogant, cockiness best here. I mean, he is just a complete douchebag. You can't help but love him for it. I mean, you can't help but smile when it happens. I'm not going to go too much into the stories. There's some big story arcs, like uh, recently in Volume 6, there was a story arc where they had to fight against vampire zombies. And they go up against the Injustice League, and, you know, various other villains make appearances from here to there. You know, the, the Millennium Manhunters come in there, too. But on a whole, as I said, this is just the characters going around and interacting with each other in everyday situations. The Justice League International is led by three people, four in a way. Originally, it was led by Batman, but then Batman relinquished hold of the Justice League International to Maxwell Lord and Martian Manhunter because he doesn't really have the time for it and, well, he's not really a publicity person. He doesn't put his face out there for everyone to see. And then for the European branch, we have Captain Adam as the leader there. So you have Martian Manhunter and Captain Adam as kind of the field leaders, and then you have Maxwell Lord who finances the team. Like I said, a lot of members come in. I want to get that to you. You're going to see a lot of guest starring, from Aquaman to Animal Man, from Power Girl to Wonder Woman, and everything in between. Everything. So we might as well get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good. There's some really funny moments in this. Really great 
comedic moments. There's no denying that. And the character interactions in this feel natural and feel almost every day. It's not like it's forced character interactions with robotic dialogue. It's characters just interacting with each other. And it's very nicely done, very nicely written. Uh, we have a great span of characters here. And, you know, usually I'd say the Justice League needs to be the big seven for it to be fantastic. You know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern, and Flash. But you get characters here that are C-list characters. Dr. Light? Really? Booster Gold, Blue Beetle? As much as I love them, at this point, they weren't that popular. Captain Atom? Fire? Ice? I mean, you're going to get a lot of characters here that are just not popular characters that are fun to kind of just read because that's the thing. They're not popular characters. I constantly get into an argument with one of, the, well, I don't know if argument's a word, uh, gentleman's discussion with one of my co-workers who I play D&D with, and he and I have opposite opinion on how the Justice League should work. I say the Justice League needs to work as the Big Seven. He says the Justice League works best when it is no-name characters, and the Big Seven have their own comics. And in this situation, I actually have to agree with him because JLI works best in that situation. It works best when you don't have the Big Seven here. Uh, but this is probably the only time that it does because this is more of a sitcom comic than a superhero comic. So it works well for that. Another good is, well, it's a fun atmosphere. It has really flushed out characters, really flushed out atmospheres. I mean, you really get to feel the embassy, and that really sounds silly. But, you know, when you have the Justice League, even in the original comics, I mean, they worked out in a cave. I mean, eventually they got the satellite, which was really cool. But, I mean, the environments weren't that overly impressive. And here you got the embassy, and you feel like it's home for you. Which is great. Bad. Well, if you're looking for your traditional superhero comic where there's fighting and honor and action and suspense, you're not going to really get it here. Only about 20% of this comic is actually superheroes going out doing superhero things. For example, I just read an issue where Guy Gardner teased people, the whole entire issue, fought Kilowog as a friendly little fight. And started pulling pranks on people. The whole issue was that. There was no superheroing at all. The whole issue was that. And also Booster Gold and Blue Beetle trying to create a casino. These are not traditional superhero stories. So if you're looking for that, you're not going to get it here. In addition to that, with the exception of maybe five or six characters, the cast is rotating a lot. So it's hard for you to really stay interested on certain characters. For example, you can invest yourself in Guy Gardner, Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, Martian Man Under Fire and Ice, and Maxwell Lord, along with Mr. Miracle. But if you think you're going to invest yourself in Dr. Fate, or Captain Marvel, or Batman, you're solely disappointed. I mean, out of those, Batman does show up the most, but I mean, Captain Marvel leaves almost right away. Wonder Woman gets bored of the League right away. So certain characters don't always stay. On the whole, whether or not you should get it. Well, like I said, going in with the mentality of knowing what this comic is, which is very much a sitcom comic, I think that it is a good thing to pick up. Is it necessary? No, I wouldn't say that. Justice League International is kind of a guilty pleasure more than anything, if I could give it a term. It's a fun comic that's good to read and really enjoyable, but you just have to know what you're getting into. If you know what you're getting into and you're okay with that, then it's definitely something that you want to pick up. Uh, I do want to mention, and this is more or less based on my research and from what I've heard from other opinions, that Justice League International stays solid until Keith Giffins leaves the team. Once he leaves in a big story called Breakdown or Breakup or I don't know, uh, the comic starts to fall apart. Now, how much validity is to the statement, I don't know because I haven't got that far. So far of the six volumes released, Keith Giffins has stayed on the team. But, you know, like I said, this is definitely something that you might want to pick up. If not pick up the whole series, at least pick up Volume 1, because while well, Justice League International, the team is coming back after Generations Lost. Or if you're planning to read Generation Lost and you want to get a little bit of background of these characters, you can get them in JLI. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to end this review here. Justice League International, if you know what you're getting into, you're going to get into something good. 
something enjoyable, something new, and, well, something fun. That said, I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.